Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, this Today's nighttime lesson is about the PSAT. Uh, my name is Mr. Feeney and this is Mitch Blatstein. He's joining us from Education Plus, uh, which is a tutoring and testing company uh, out of Jenga Town, uh, serving a lot of our students. Uh, and we brought him in today to be able to help you understand the PSAT. We're looking at um, how to get your results, how to understand them, and then what to do next. So Mitch, thanks so much for being here, uh, for being able to kind of dig into the, the PSAT. Um, we're going to get into some of the frequently asked questions about that, but um, you're here because you're one of the experts, somebody that we rely on in the guidance department for information about the PSAT. Uh, I guess a question I have to start is, how are you an expert? Like what's, you know, what makes you knowledgeable about the PSAT? And then we'll talk about what you know about it and, and how our students can use this information. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me sure. here today. Thrilled to be here and to be able to reach out to your student population. Um, our company has been in existence for over 40 years. So we've helped thousands of students throughout the Delaware Valley navigate their road to college. And one of the ways to navigate the road is using the PSAT since it's the first test first standardized test in the way to, in the route to taking the SAT. Sure, sure. So that's how For we... For the students, kind of their first introduction to these tests. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we've studied and analyzed lots and lots of tests over the years, and um, I'm fairly familiar with it. Okay. okay. All right. That's yeah. great. Good. So yeah, that's whenever I have a question, I'm, I'm going to you about this yes. stuff because I don't know it uh, well enough, and, and that's something I, I hope that the department can do. You know, or, or your educators is just say, if we don't know the answer, we got to find somebody who, who has the answer. So we have, we're going to start out with just some frequently asked questions, uh, jump around a little bit. I want, I want most importantly for our students to be able to get, for you to get the context of the PSAT. Uh, at this point, you very likely have taken the PSAT uh, as far as, at least historically, uh, the district has had all of the sophomores take the, the PSAT and then the juniors on a voluntary basis to sign up. Uh, and so uh, you likely have gotten your results, whether or not you know it, uh, and we're gonna be able to unpack those today. But it's important to understand a little bit more about the PSAT and really its purpose and its function. And so we're gonna go through just a couple of different questions. So Mitch, you, you said it's kind of the, the first foray, foray pardon me, into standardized testing. Um, so what does the PSAT, what does it stand for? What sure. It, so it stands <clears throat> for the Preliminary Scholastic Assessment Test. And I recommend, and I know the 10th graders here are required to take it, but I also suggest that the 11th graders take okay. it as a way to see their progress from 10th to 11th grade. Most students improve by just being in school nice. and just okay. living their lives right. and taking right. their classes. Right. Uh, but not everybody. Some stay the same with the numbers and some go down. Um, one of the ways that it's different is the PSAT, as we'll see in a minute, each of the two sections is out of 760. So there's an evidence-based okay. reading and writing score and there's a math score. So the total is 1520. The SAT is out of 1600. Each of the two sections are 800 and 800. Okay. So that's Got one it. difference. Mm -hmm. Another is there's an essay on the SAT that's optional. There's no writing portion on the PSAT. Okay. Got it. So it's I guess in some ways kind of doing a favor to the students of we're going to introduce you to this, but we're going to, not going to throw you in the deep end necessarily right away. Correct. Okay, Okay. that makes sense. Um, so we talked a little bit, sophomores and juniors are eligible to take it. Yes. Um, for, and you're working with students and families, so who should take it? Is there a particular type of kid or is it kind of just open to everybody? It is open to everybody. Okay. Anybody, I mean, <clears throat> students who certainly are college bound want to sit for it, sure. but students who are, are not really sure what they want to do you know, you all watching this, that you're questioning, you know, do I want to go to college? Do I not want to go to college? It would be a good idea to sit for it and just check it out okay. and see, see the results and then kind of sit with somebody that can help, help you analyze the yeah. results. Yeah, nice. Uh, we look at, obviously, the PSAT as one of the main predictors. I apologize. The SAT or the ACT is one of the main predictors for college success. Um, and so can the PSAT help? us to be able to determine whether or not we'll do well on the SAT or the ACT. When we drill down into it in a few minutes with the, the other slides that we're going to present, we'll see how a student can use the results to look ahead to the SAT mm -hmm. with some sense of how they may do with or without preparation. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah and that's one of the things that I really want to accomplish for today. Very often, students get the results, and then maybe they know what their, their total score is, okay, out of 15, 20? Correct. Right, so they know what their total score is, and that's great, but they don't, the, the score and the results don't mean anything to them, and that's one of the things, I'll say, generally, I'm not a gigantic fan of standardized tests. That's just 
kind of my view on them in general. But I love the PSAT because of the results that you get. I think that's something that's, that you're going to be able to dig into. So we're going to actually look through a sample students' results, going to be able to dig in so that you can do the same thing with these. So um, our questions moving forward, I guess the, the one, last one we're going to talk about real quick, uh, we have in education, tons of acronyms, the NMSQT, and why this might be important, this test might be important for juniors. Sure. The NMS <clears throat> NMSQT stands for National Merit Scholar Qualifying Test. Junior year, the students taking in 11th grade, the top 1% in the country for those results are eligible for letters of commendation, which bodes well for college and the college process, but also a $2,500 scholarship, which goes with that as well. So a very small percent, just the elite in the rarefied air, are eligible for both the commendations and the scholarship. Okay, got it. So that, that's a benefit for okay. the, the real high level juniors. So um, somebody who's taking the PSAT in junior year, is there anything else they have to do to try to qual like to qualify for that or that test serves that purpose the also? The test serves okay, the purpose. Great. Nice, yep. okay, good. So we're gonna look at the, and the, the, the rest of our time, we're gonna look at how to get into your scores and really we're gonna show you that there's some good stuff in there, kind of mining those. And then the last question we wanna to try to figure out is can we generalize this at all? Can we learn, can you as a, a student, can you learn more about your test taking ability, your, just, your aptitude in reading and math especially uh, as we move forward, that's going to be what we're going to spend the rest of our time on. So uh, this is going to be a step-by-step. -step. Hopefully you're able to see uh, some of these screenshots as we go through this. But we're going to be trying to access your score. So you're going to log into collegeboard.org. And so if you're watching this, um, if you're able to watch it uh, on your own, pause it and go ahead and do this. You can do this side-by-side, -side, which is great. Um, or if you're working in a nighttime or another setting, um, you can... Uh, just watch through this and then be able to go in and do it. But you'll log into collegeboard.org. Um, if you don't have an account yet, you can go ahead and make one, uh, but it's just going to be your username and your password. Um, and if you've already gotten a score report, there's a code with it. You can use that code uh, and then you're going to be able to find your results that way as well. Okay. And then accessing your score. So we have a kid here named Katie. Uh, College Board is very friendly because they want your money. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and uh, so Katie's here. We're, she's, she's looking for, you are looking for specifically right now, your PSAT and MSQT scores. So you go ahead and click on that link. And then Mitch, what do we see when we get into, uh, we click on that link and we get into our scores. We're going to see a couple different score reports. In particular then, uh, our main one that's up there uh, we're looking for the most recent PSAT or NMSQT. And this is whether you're a sophomore or a junior. What's cool about the juniors, you can actually, as you said, track your progress. You can go back in and say, oh, I, I see 10th grade. I can tell whether or not I've made any progress, which is helpful. Yes. So one of the things that we see is you'll get the date of the test. Now, for this student, it was October 16th, 2019. Mm -hmm. It says 11th grade. Total score is 1100, which we see out of 1520. The evidence-based reading and writing, which is made up of two sections. The evidence-based reading and writing is made up of reading, and also it's made up of something called writing and language. So the reading are, are passages. But you said we didn't have an essay. Okay, there's no, there's okay. no essay. All right. There's no essay. All right. All right. So it's, but it's, it is called writing okay. and language. Yeah. All right. so, the, so the reading is five passages that the students have to read and interpret um, and come up with the right answers. The writing and language are more passages, a little bit easier to read. Okay. It's all grammar-based and editing-based okay. and punctuation-based. Those two sections together make up the 570, combine the 570. Uh, and then the math score is two different sections of math. One is non-calculator. Students have to put their calculator under their desk. Mm -hmm. And then there's another section that's calculator-based. And again, this is out of 760. So this student got a 570 and a 530. Nice. You add the two All numbers, right. she had an 1100. All right, very good. And we, can t we talked a little bit already about, can, can you tell just by this roughly where that, that student would be if this were not a PSAT but an SAT? Are they roughly getting 1,100 or yeah, they, kind they of actually, in the ballpark? Yeah, they are we actually, going to get to that? We are going to okay, get to awesome. that. Yeah, All we're right, going to cover that. All right. right, so let's get into the section-by-section section results. Again, as I said before, this is what I think the PSAT does a great job of is, and I don't know if, if you experienced this when you were uh, in school. I sometimes did as a student. I would get a, uh, a sheet of paper back from, like, from my teacher, and it just said, like, B plus at the top. I don't know what that score means. <laughs> you know, like, or, you know, I do a math. It, well, this is more frequent than math. I would miss problems in math and I knew they were wrong but I didn't know why so if you have experienced this before uh, and you got your PSAT for this kid we'll call her Katie she has an 1100 all right so what does that mean 
this, what's, what I love about this is we're going to find out what that means. So on the next screen there, you're going to see, you just click that arrow, the forward arrow of that score report, and you're going to get a, a real, uh, an abundance of data. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a couple things, and, and Mitch, you can just point out what, you know, what jumps out to you. Yes. Um, these next three slides are just what you see as you scroll down that very first page. So again, we see the 1100 there, uh, percentile, uh, 79th, 79th percentile. Do you ever use that, or is that important, or just... Yeah, it's it's from, a raw our, score. from our perspective, it's not okay. it's not critical. But students do like to see that. Okay, you know, this means I did better than seventy nine percent of all the juniors that took the PSAT. Twenty one percent did better than me that day. Okay, um, but we'll take a look at the upper right hand corner. We'll look at where it says download your score report. Yep. We'll look at that in a minute. Yep. Um, and then there's the score overview, score details, test questions, skills insight, and MS. Um, NMSC selection index, each right. of those can be clicked on right. and there's information. Yeah, there's so okay. much to go in there. So yeah. as, you, as we continue to scroll down, or if you have your score report, or if you're looking on your account right now, you're, you're scrolling down the page, uh, obviously because of screenshots, we can only limit this, but the next thing we see is then the reading and writing and then the math scores. And again, it's a, a greater detail to what, <clears throat> pardon me, a greater detail to what we've seen thus far. We had that, the, raw, the raw score there, the 570 and the, three, the 530. But then you're also seeing some check marks, some score ranges, and then the percentiles within each. Is that kind of allowing us to dig a little more deeply? Yes, yeah, and then when it says score range, that means if you took the PSAT again, you might drop 30 points to a 540, okay. you might go up 30 points to a 600. So it's given a ballpark in terms of where you are. Okay, great. Okay. And then at the bottom then, this is where I guess what I was looking at on the next slide is what your PSAT scores could mean for the SAT. Yes. Okay, so this is where, because very often a student wants to know if they're taking this for, you know, the purposes of getting an SAT score, an ACT score, they want to know, did it work? Like, am I any good on this? Yes. You know, yep. and, um, you know, where, where might I be? And this, this is a fairly large range, I think, from if I'm seeing this properly. Yes, it is. And from our perspective, um, it's somewhat accurate. It's based on the statistics the College Board um, a masses over the years. So what they're saying is this student could possibly drop 30 points to a 540 on the SAT, maybe go up 80 to a 650. Okay. That's why the 540 okay. to 650. Our experience is through our company, because we do test prep, sure. our students go up yeah. and they go up much more than this typically. So this is just a ballpark based sure. on their statistical analysis over the years. Okay. It's what they have found. And the same thing with the math. We take a look, this student had a 530, they're saying, okay, she could drop 40 on the SAT or go up 80 on the SAT. So that's, that's you know, the range. Awesome, okay, yeah. so we're gonna dig now into the actual test questions. What most people don't realize is the, you actually get access to the entirety of the, the test, the PSAT again. Um, whether or not that makes you feel good or not, it's, <laughs> you, get to, you get to tackle it again if you want to, which is great practice. It's, yes. You know, it's a, the P in, uh, in the PSAT. And so what we're going to look at is if you are at the top of your page in your account and you're logging in, uh, sorry, you're navigating to the middle section, the test questions, that's really going to be helpful for you. We're just going to look at the reading and we're just going to look specifically at one section, but this is where you can go back and realize and, and maybe assess a little bit how well you did. Um, so we're gonna do a look at the reading section. On the next slide then, there's a key there or an overview key um, that talks a little bit about some of the level of difficulty and so that. So when I look at that reading section, I'm looking at the total questions and so on, how am I supposed to understand what I'm about to see? Yeah, so it does show the correct answers, the incorrect, and the omits. Now, for all the students watching, there's no penalty on the PSAT or SAT for an incorrect answer. So you want to answer every question. You want to put something down. This student got wind of that and knew that, so she answered every question. And then if you look underneath, there's a key to show the questions are easy, medium, or hard. So you get to see that. Yep. On the reading section, there is no order of difficulty. It's random. It okay. doesn't go in increasing order okay. of difficulty. <clears throat> and then it shows if it was correct, you get a check. If you omitted, you see the circle with the line through it that's red. Unscorable means you didn't fill in the oval clearly enough, right. and it's, uh, it can't be read. And then if it's incorrect, it's an X there. Awesome. Okay, okay, so let's see what that actually looks like on our next slide. The question by question results. I think this one is really, really powerful for a student, especially that fourth column of the difficulty, where you can go through and see Okay, did I get the easy questions right? Did I get the medium, medium difficulty questions right? And then did, was I able to, to score well? And, and how well was I able to score on the most difficult of the questions? And so well, we see that score grid available to you. Your, your scores are right there. Uh, and what's interesting is your correct answers will all be 
And, you know, everybody in the room, as you're looking at these scores, will all be the correct answers. Uh, you'll have the same ones because it was the same test questions. We're going to dig into question number three. So if you click on the number three there, you're going to see the question pop up for you, and then in this case for Katie, uh, as we're going through. This was a medium difficulty question that she got wrong, okay? Uh, and so we're going to be able to see it itself. So it's the individual question analysis, and this is what, I, is what I think is really, really great. If you're trying to understand a little bit about why you scored what you did or even how you take tests, this is, I think, very valuable. So what's, what are we seeing here for the individual question analysis? Yeah, on the left is the actual passage. So the student gets to see, you all get to see the passage that you read on test day. So you can, you can actually slide down and look at the entire passage. And then when you look at question three, it shows the question and it gives you the question and the four answers because there's four answers. It's all multiple choice. Then it says the question difficulty medium. And then if we go to the next slide, we'll see that it also provides what the right answer is, right. shows what your answer was, what you chose. And then there's an explanation of why the answer is B here, mm -hmm. which is really helpful. Mm -hmm. It's really great to be able to yep. analyze and understand where you went wrong and how to interpret what right. they're looking for is the right answer. Right, right. And you'll see there, I just, uh, I had to kind of piece it together, but then um, on the right-hand side, you see why A, C, and D were wrong. Because I think that's something a lot of times the student says, well, I, this, is, this is why I think it is. PSAT, in this case, is providing to you really valuable feedback on your thought process and how you tackle that question. I think that's really good. Okay, so that was a lot, and there's a lot of detail there about, uh, you know, for you, as you're going through and looking at your results, you may have gotten question three right, right? This might not be your particular question. You may, this might not be as relevant to you, but you're seeing what's available to you as well. Um, when you go back out then to return to the test questions, you're going to see that black bar with the test questions tab, and you're gonna see reading, writing and language, math without calculator, and math with calculator. As much as you would love for us to go through each of those questions individually with you, we're not, because we don't have time, uh, but I want you to be able to see if there's a particular section you think, man, I, th maybe this is a section I really wish I could improve on. You can go back in and, and almost self assess and self-analyze. Why did I miss that? Why did I miss this one over this one? And get the answers to it right there, which I think is really, really valuable. So this is something I would encourage you to do uh, is to take the time and actually go through and really look at your results, not think, as most students do, is I got an 1100, what can I do with that? Uh, but more, because this is a practice, where can I go from here? And so um, we're going to talk for just a second about skills. Uh, is, this, is this next section, this is the last section we're going we're to touch on, uh, in your experience with working with kids, what can a kid learn about his or her skills? If anything, there's a skills insight it says, based on what you did in this three-hour period of time, you're really good at this or really maybe need to work on this or whatever. How have you seen that be helpful to students? Is it too overgeneralized? What, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a good question. Here's my thoughts. It's, um, you know, there's an algorithm to generate, based on how this student has done, what recommendations and what feedback ETS and College Board provides each of you with. So it's helpful to read through it. The question is how to interpret what they're saying. Okay. And this is where either getting a coach and working with a service like ours, or there's lots of programs that are out there that, that can be done online. Sure. And there's tons of books and programs out there. So it's knowing how to interpret what they're saying here and what it means. Um, I, I think it's helpful. I think it's useful. It's feedback. And um, you know, I, I trust that all the students will take the time, or the majority of them will take the time to really go through and read this. The truth is, most don't. That's our experience. Right. And, and I encourage you all, as Mr. Feeney just said, to go through and really read, read and analyze this. Yeah. So one thing, kind of a moving forward thing, if you haven't done this already or if you don't have it, um, is getting to access your score report and then being able to kind of take that with you somewhere or, or be able to deliver that, uh, analyze, assess it all in one spot. Because frankly, I, I like the, the depth that you have of being able to review all your questions and everything else like this, but it's it's not a snapshot in one you know portable place that I can just take it with me. So I'm going to recommend that if you don't have the paper form already, just to download your score report. You do that at the top of that page, uh, the top right hand side you see there highlighted, and you're going to get a, a four page report that includes all of your sections broken out. So Mitch actually has a copy of that. If you don't have that, just to, to show you what that looks like, um, you can see. You've got your summer report and then the breakdowns of each spot. And the back page is what I really, really like as well, as you're seeing on your screen a, a, a portion of. 
um, of the, the questions all laid out for you. So that's the part where you can just say, okay, in a, in a one page snapshot, I can tell kind of where, maybe there's some gaps and there's some things to pick up. Um, so regardless of the score, if I got a 1520 or if I got, I think a 320 or something like that was the, the lowest possible score, what can I do next? What's next? What, what are, what's something that I can um, use these results to do to move forward uh, for? Uh, so we talk about, uh, and this is on our last slide, so we're wrapping up kind of some next steps for you guys. So log into collegeboard.org and review your PSAT results. That's really, really important because that's how you make them your PSAT results, and that's, I think that's really important, that ownership part. Uh, and then share these results and analyses with your parents. Have you been with students or with students and, and families as they're sharing, going, kind of going through, what are some things that parents are looking for or what are some things that kids share? Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to speak to your families here, to the students first and foremost, but also to their parents and to walk them through how to interpret this. So yes, that's great. something I do and yeah. there's no charge for that. Happy to do that with, with any of your, your families. Um, but there is a way to use the results to then plan what's next when to take the SAT. Okay. The SAT is offered seven times an academic year. So this academic year that we're in now, it was offered in August, October, November, December. Oh, okay. And it's coming up in March, May, and June. Okay. So seven times. Okay. Um, we didn't touch on the ACT, sure. but the ACT is another test. Historically, it's been a Midwest phenomena, but it's another test that's offered for acceptance into college. All the colleges and universities will use either the SAT or ACT. Nice. Okay. So the PSATs can help us look at and talk about whether or not a student should take an ACT, let's say. Because okay. I don't believe North Penn yet offers a pre-ACT, if I'm not mistaken. We don't, no. Yeah, okay, no. so that's not offered here. Um, and there's ways to interpret the score report, and it's helpful for a tutor or a coach that's going to make a difference working with you in how to improve your scores. So we look at this and we nice. study this and analyze this. Okay. It's useful. All right, great. So uh, that's really our goal today, as I said, was to, to introduce you to your PSAT results and let you know there's a lot more than just that surface number. Okay. And so the last step there on the slide, if you'd like help, there's an SAT ACT resource page. <clears throat> pardon me. An SAT ACT resource page available to you on the Guidance College and Career page. There you can uh, find out more information about Mitch and his company at Education Plus or other tutors in the area, other free resources that are available to you. But if you want to get the most out of this PSAT results, uh, then you're going to have to answer this kind of what's next question for yourself and say, here's what I'm going to do with this moving forward. I'm getting kind of choked up. I'm getting kind of <laughs> emotional about this. All right, guys, uh, <clears throat> go ahead and log into College Board, get your results. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mitch. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.